Okay, so now we have a sense of how these log functions sort of you know, look in an algebraic sense. Now let's see what they actually look like in a visual sense. Let's start graphing the log function and get a sense of how it looks visually. Okay, so let's begin with um, sort of a standard looking one. How about if the function f of x were to be log base 2 of x? And I want to know what that graph looks like. Okay, well, what can we do? Well, one thing we could do is just plot some points and get a sense of what this thing looks like. Now, you, it may be good for you or it may be easier for you to sort of write the converted statement just to sort of help you. Um, so a log is an exponent. So that's the exponent that I have to raise 2 to in order to get x. So basically, this would be x equals 2 to the f of x. This may help or may not help. It certainly helps me. Let's make a table now and see uh, what this would look like for different values of x. It also will help you pick some, e pick some easy values to plug in for x. For example, what if I put in a 1 for x? Then what power of 2 will give me 1? Well, the answer is 0. Okay. Uh, what if I put in a 2 for x? What will this have to be to make this thing equal to 2? 2 to what power is 2? Well, that's 1. Uh, 3 would be uh, an unfortunate choice for x because it would be hard for me to figure out what this equals. But 4 is good. If I put in 4, that value must be 2. Because 2 squared is 4. Uh, what about some negative values? Could I put in negative uh, 3 here? Well, I could, but of course, there is no power of 2 that will give me negative. So forget about negatives. So in fact, this graph will not go into the negative side of the x-axis because it's just not defined there. The domain is going to be positive x's. So but let's try some small values. For example, what about 1 half? If I put a 1 half in here, what would this function have to be? 2 to what power equals a half? Well, 2 to the minus 1. So in fact, this is negative 1. And, and uh, 1 fourth would be negative 2, and so on. So let's start to put this together and see if we can get an accurate picture for this. Let me just move this over for one moment. Let me create a little axis action. <laughs> one little axis action. OK, there's an axis. Now I'm going to start plugging these points in. So here we go. Um, 1, 0. So I go one unit over and then 0. So let me do this in a different color. Let's use this color here. So 1, 0. It's right here. Then 2, 1. So I go 2 and go 1 unit up. Go here. 4, 2. So 1, 2, th one, two 3, 4. And I go up 1, 2. OK. And then at a half, I go negative 1. So at a half, I go down to negative 1. And think about it, a fourth, which would be right over uh, here, would be negative 2. So it's way down here. So you can see what's happening. I get a curve that looks like this. It grows very slowly. It's increasing. And it comes down like that. And that's the log function base 2 of x. Notice, by the way, that if you turn your head this way and look at the picture and flip it, it sort of looks like an exponential. Well, that's because this is going to be the inverse of the exponential we'll see later. But for now, notice that it has that same shape. It, it's increasing, but now very slowly here. It's going up. But here, it's actually asymptotic to the y-axis because, in fact, there's no value for x, which will make that 0. And so we have a vertical asymptote here for the log function that looks like this. OK, all of this by plotting points. Now, uh, what if we take a look at another function? How about if I look at a function, let's call it g of x. Suppose that's log base 3 of x. OK. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, it's going to have this basic general shape. But the question is, what happens when I put a bigger number there? Is it going to sort of go up or down? Or how is that going to interact? Well, let's just make a table of a couple of values and see. That's the easiest way to do that. 